Yo, 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 yo. What up, Comic Sense community, crowd, crew, my core family? Um, shout out to you all. Rise, shine. Awesome, awesome, awesome Tuesday morning. And we are back again with another episode of Focus. That is Final Order Cutoff on Kenny Spec, where we are going to be covering um, FOC for 10 3 2022 for books releasing three weeks out that is number one issues first cover appearances um first full appearances keys the spec we are going to cover it all as always i am issue x this is not a show that you have to watch live but i suggest within the next three week period before these books drop three weeks from wednesday i suggest you find the stream, take a look at the show, see what you should be looking for, see what should be on your pull list, see what you should be trying to get, possibly, from Comic Sense. That having been said, got to keep the lights on, got to pay the bills. So, I want to bring your attention to the scroll at the bottom of the screen. Like and follow Comic Sense on Facebook. Join our Facebook group. Check us out on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Follow us at Comic Sense on Instagram and find us on the Twitter. That is what it is. As always, you know what we do. We go right into the diamond. We are going to cover some of the fire. Some fire. I mean, but if you've been on a quest, here is the fire. It is dropping three weeks from now. We're going to cover that. As always, we go right into diamond and we're going to get right to it because we got a big day coming up. So we want to get this out of the way. Yes, I know we are live a little bit early, but it is what it is. I want to adjust that time. I like 7.15 on Tuesday mornings after close of FOC. Better than I like 7.30. Um, I don't know. Early birds, worms, the whole nine. So here we go. There is Diamond, and we're going to get into it. So first things first, man. You're messing with the worst. And we have... Purple Oblivion dropping from Behemoth Comics this week. Excuse me, three weeks from today. Purple Oblivion has several covers. Purple Triangle up out of there. You know what that means. We talk about it every week. Back order out of stock, though it may say low. Back order out of stock. We are going to start off with your one in five copy incentive cover done by Simone Diego. Simone, there is your one in five copy incentive. Behemoth. Yo, they came at us, right? They don't even put Behemoth on these books anymore when there's Sumerian press. They do Sumerian. We see you, Behemoth. We know what you're doing. Things pretty cool. We like it. There it is. That is your Diego Simone one in five ratio variant cover, followed by your limited edition cover D. This cover is limited to 1,000 copies allocations may occur it is also done by diego simone allocations may occur on this joint total of a thousand copies will be printed um that doesn't mean a thousand will be circulated but they're expecting as much hence the possible allocation here is your cover c done by diego simone as well diego simone doing all of the things all of the covers not phoning it in not giving us repeat covers original covers here is your cover b also done by diego simone and last but certainly not least the, our favorite covers the covers we always suggest you should have this is cover a by diego simone and we even have some preview pages that we're going to peep because they're not giving us the standard preview option so we're just going to peep some of these preview pages that they've posted within the synopses. So there you have it. This is Purple Oblivion number one of four. It is Behemoth Sumerian Comics written by E and E Pliskin, artist, cover artist, Diego Simone, Purple Triangle, back order, not stock, from the creators of Heavy Metal Drummer, Jessica Knott, Dominatrix, Disciplinarian, Fetishist, Sadist, Goddess, or at least that's what her business card says. Enter Peter, a young man who's just found this card and is about to let his curiosity get himself into a situation with that begins with a cult, but ends with something much more sinister. This is Purple Oblivion, number one from Behemoth Comics. Have it on your pull list. You never know. Any books, any books, any books are so optionable. 
so visual storyboard screenplays so so such such so optionable so very optionable next from boom we have the big drop briar number one second print we told you this book shipped it shipped sold out at the distribution level gone we knew this book was going back to print everyone should have expected this purple triangled up out of there this means back order not stocked as you can see here back order not stocked this is a german garcia cover variant cover different cover than the original four covers released with this book not including the ratio variants um obviously we know it is written by christopher cantwell artist cover artist german garcia this thing will probably go back to print at least two more times that is my bet what if sleeping beauty never got her happily ever after and instead had to save herself set in a brutal fantasy world that time forgot this isn't the fairy tale you know this is briar number one it was an excellent 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 book my suggestion go out get all the covers, make sure you have the A cover, some of those higher ratio variants that are still very much affordable at the moment. I don't think they will be affordable for long. You're investing. Listen, it is already out of stock. 56,000 copies of across four covers. That's not a lot. When you consider Something is Killing the Children had just under 60,000 copies across three covers for that first issue. It is not a lot. Go out, make sure you have these books while they are still affordable. I mark my word, I'm telling you, I'm just saying. As for this second print, make your phone calls, call your people, get online with your local comic shop, have this thing on this pull list, on your pull list, make sure they have a copy handy for you. We like this book. We're very high on Briar around here in the Comic Sense community. Next from Boom Studios, we have House of Slaughter, number 10, new story arc popping up. House of Slaughter, number 10. I did something wrong, as always, equipment superior to personnel or ESP. So then, House of Slaughter, number 10. Come on, brody. We did put 10 up in there, right? We did. Okay. So House of Slaughter likes to do this stupid thing where when you put in House of Slaughter, it gives you all of these House of Slaughters. So here is number 10. Number 10 went big for the new story arc all the way up to a 100 copy incentive. This is done by Max Fumara. And there it is, a virgin color cover, virgin cover, really cool. That is by Max Fumara. Then you have your one in 75 copy incentive done by James Heron. Interesting. Looks like they made this into a body bag variant, the one in 75, which generally these aren't variants, but they made the one in 75, a excuse me, ratio variants, but they made the one in 75 a body bag variant. Here's your one in 50 copy incentive done by Andre Arajo. That is your one in 50, a virgin color cover as well. Then you have a 1 in 25 Werther, very cool Deladera cover. That's a very cool cover, even for Werther's standards. And then you have a Heron body bag variant. I'm assuming that these covers are going to be the same. One will have a tray dress. The other will be Virgin. Um, and then you have your tray dress of the Deladera incentive. Cover B and cover A by Raphael Albuquerque. Very, very cool cover. We already know James Tiny in the Four, Sam Johns, artist Werther Deladera, Leticia Catonici, and Raphael Albuquerque on the cover. Back order, not stocked. After journeying through a watery hell, Edwin finally returns home to the House of Slaughter. But his problems might be just beginning. New horrors loom in the next chapter of the epic adventure from the world of something is killing the children. So we're going to continue to follow Edwin into the next arc. That is House of Slaughter, number 10. Next, subsequent print, subsequent print, subsequent print, subsequent print. We like subsequent prints. We like to say if you invested in the first print, fortify that investment with the subsequent print. This is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 100.
second print. And here you have your Dan Mora cover of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers at number 100, second print featuring Yield Death Ranger. Written by Ryan Parrott, artist Marco Reno, and various cover artist Dan Mora. A legacy that began in Gogo Power Rangers finally converges here as Charge to 100 reaches this milestone issue and kicks off brand new beginnings. Rangers fans would not want to miss Ryan Perot's final issue on the main series, joined by a superstar lineup of returning artists including Dan Mora, Marco Rinna, Moisue Hildago, um, Hendry Presecha, Daniel Di Nicuolo, Eleanor Carlini, Francesco Motorini, and Miguel Mercado. News of a deadly threat reaches the team, one that threatens every ranger in Earth and even a home long since destroyed. As the climactic battle against unspeakable enemies unfolds, the lines between friend and flow blur and, blur and difficult decisions await even the strongest of rangers. The epic culmination of a story years in the making, purple triangle back order out of stock. Back order out of stock. That means, as we continue to say, it is gone on the distribution level. That was boom. Next, we have Dark Horse. Dark Horse trying to become a heavyweight, dropping three number ones for this particular FOC. The first one, Dead Maw, number one from Dark Horse Comics. There is a CGC graded option, and we have a preview game. Dead Maw, number one from David Stoll, cover art. That is your David Stoll cover art. Also very cool. It is written by Adam Cesare, artist, cover artist, David Stoll. Back order, not stocked. The Pin Mills Galleria is about to be demolished. Five teams sneak into the mall to take a last look around before it is gone. However, while Pin Mills has been closed for years, the mall is far from abandoned. A night of exploration becomes a shopping spree from hell. The teens must contend with the sprawling, transformative, cosmic horror of Pin Mills or be trapped forever within the dead mall. That is Dead Maw number one. We are going to peep the preview game. It is on deck. Wow. Very, very nice art. Soft touch. Really nice art. Nice coloring. Looks to be digital. And there you have your preview of Dead Maw number one. Next from Dark Horse. This is one I am excited about. Loved, I read the synopsis. It was one of the most enjoyable synopses I have read in some time. It is called Ones, number one. What a name, what a name. Ones, number one. Come on, bro. Here we go. Dark Horse Comics. It has two covers. I believe it has more than two covers. So we're going to do, if I recall, there is even a one in 50 and a one in 25. Dark Horse jumping in big. Yes, 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 yes. Here is your one in 50 foil incentive done by Yannick Paquette of ones number one. Listen, this book is going to be dope. I'm a fan. I'm all in. I am on board. I cannot wait for this book. Here is your one in 25 copy incentive also done by Yannick Paquette. Hmm. How does it differ from your one in 50? So that is your one in 50. How is the one in 25 different? I can't see a difference. Do you? Oh, it's not foil. That would be the difference. Okay. So then you have your cover B of the ones. Really cool cover B. Man, the premise of this book is really dope. Let us skip to the one in 10 really quick. This is your one in 10 FOC variant done by Liam Sharp. And cover A done by Jacob Edgar. That is your cover A by Jacob Ever. Listen, this synopsis is so much fun. We're going to peep the preview game. We're going to talk about it. It is back order, not stock. It is written by Brian Michael Bendis. Artist, cover artist, Jacob Edgar. From award-winning writer Brian Michael Bendis comes the next best awesome super team to end all super teams. The Ones. Every single person in every mythology that was told they were the one are brought together for the first time to defeat the one, the actual one, the real actual one. This amazing new vi vision is brought to life by Wonderkin artist and co-creator Jacob Edgar. Watch as he brings explosive comics splendor to this new big world. Think Good Omens meets Ghostbusters meets The Atom Project meets The Goonies meets everything everywhere all at once meets um anything else you've ever liked. The Ones. This looks 
dope. I'm in. Preview game on deck. Let us look at the ones. And that is your preview game for the ones. I like this book, Dark Horse Comics. All of the ones converge together to go against the one. Really dope concept. Next, from Dark Horse Comics, we have Quick Stops. Excuse me. Might be Quick Steps. We shall see. We shall see. We shall see. Sometimes I'm taking notes. I'm doing it late at night. It's so fast. It is Quick Stops, number one. One of the covers has not been revealed yet. This is going to be a Jeremy Simpson cover. Back order, not stocked, unrevealed on that cover. And then you have a John Springlemeyer cover, an homage there. Kevin Smith doing his homage thing. Antidote from the Animals of the Askew Universe. You know, like View Askew, the Askew Universe. So then, this is written by Kevin Smith. Artist Jeremy Simpson, cover artist on A is John Springlemeyer. Enter the SQ universe. When pop culture nuisance Kevin Smith's brand new anthology series opens for business, telling tall tales from the Jersey, Jersey world of his classic comedies. In this premiere issue, Chronic Con guest of honor Holden McNeil tells Alyssa Jones in a packed podcast audience his story of going green with legendary loiterers Jay and Silent Bob in the Quick Stop Cooler and how it directly led to the birth of his blunt man in Chronic comic books. Black and white comics like the Clerk films, More Misadventures with Jay and Silent Bob, uh, Bob contains references to Kevin Smith's films like Clerks, Dogma, Chasing Amy, Mallrats, and Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. This is Quick Stops. We are going to peep the preview game on that joint, black and white. Oh, wow. What a way to use the black and whites and grays in this particular panel. Pretty dope. Something you might not want to leave on the table, call up the people. Make the phone calls. Don't know what else to tell you. Next, from IDW, we have another entry into this, what is quickly becoming a classic. Um, this is the Armageddon game. The Alliance. Uh-oh. Alliances are being formed. Oh, why did I put IDW? That is why. Alliances are being formed, TMNT, Armageddon Game, The Alliance. What are we doing wrong here? I'm going to put number one, see if that works, and it doesn't. All right, let's take out TMNT. All right. Maybe they want me to do this. We're going to get it. We are going to get it. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. How about the Alliance? No. All right. Well, we could do this another way, but we're not. Um, all right. Well. There is a new book dropping called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Armageddon Game, The Alliance, number one, where alliances are being formed. Um, you already know they're at angst. There's some tough stuff going down between the Rat King and uh, Leather Krang and 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 the, the, the motley crew of turtle villains that he's put together to give them hell. I mean, they have to team up with Shredder, Shredder's daughter. All types of characters are being pulled in. Even characters from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Archie comics are now canonized in this Armageddon game series. It is the culmination of greater than 100 issues of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is the biggest, biggest event in the history of Turtles comics. There's that. Next, we are moving on to Image Comics where we have the third installment. The third installment in the American Jesus trilogy. This is American Jesus Revelation, number one. We already know. Optioned property. Optioned property. Three covers. 
Here is our favorite cover artist, Blank Sketch, doing his, her, or their thing once again. Hardest working cover artist in comics. Next, we have your Tom Coker, cover B, followed by cover A, done by Jody Muir. So then, this is written by Mark Millar, artist Peter Gross, and Tom Coker. Cover artist for cover A is Jody Mir. The third and final volume of the Millar and Gross Antichrist trilogy is finally here and coming soon as a live action horror series from Netflix. The apocalypse is upon us. Satan is in the White House. And the return Christ is all that stands between humanity and their enslavement in the New World Order. Back order, not stopped. American Jesus, Revelation number one. And of course, and that is called Revelation, final arc, right? Like Revelation, it's the final book of the Bible. Yeah, you know, you know how that goes. Or you don't, or maybe it doesn't matter. Either way, we're going to move on. Subsequent prints, once again, we like subsequent prints with new covers. See if this one has a new cover. This is Creepshow, number one, second print from Image Comics. This is a Gabriel Hardman cover, Creepshow, number one, second print, Image Comics, back order, not stocked. Again, fortify your investment with the subsequent print. If you bought the first print, make sure you get the following follow-up prints. You don't want to be the one who got America Chavez, number one, first print, and didn't get the second or the third print, or New Agents of Atlas, number one, and didn't get the second or third print, or Something is Killing the Children, number one, and didn't get any of the subsequent prints. Fortify, fortify, fortify. Fortify that investment written by Chris Burnham and various artists, Chris Burnham and various, and John, excuse me, John McCree, cover artist, Gabriel Hardman, back order, not stock. The worldwide phenomenon based on the hit Shutter TV series comes to comics in a star studded five issue anthology series that will scare you to death. Were you scared to death when you read the first print? In debut issue, Chris Burnham, die, 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 and nameless, terrifies with the tell the trick or treaters who are taught what happens when you mess with the wrong house. Then, Legendary Batman, the animated series creator, Paul Dini, Stephen Langford, and John McCree of Dead Eyes and Hitman, petrified with the party antics of Shingo, the birthday clown with an appetite for more than cake. Each issue of Creepshow will feature different creative teams with uniquely horrifying standalone stories. This is Creepshow number one, second print. Next, from Image, man, them genies. They just keep coming at us, right? Like, legitimately, they just keep coming at us. Images, current hottest selling book period point and blank eight billion genies number two fourth print yeah they did that number two has gone back to print again do i need to tell you the fortify your investment subsequent print story again i don't think i do here it is we're getting a new cover from ryan brown we already know what happens in this book, but for those who don't, we're going to go over the synopsis. It is written by Charles Soule, artist, cover artist, Ryan Brown. Eight billion genies have appeared on Earth with one wish for everyone on the planet. We've seen the first eight seconds after the genies arrived in the first eight minutes. Now brace yourself for the first eight hours. When many insane and foolish and wonderful wishes are made and our heroes, a group of lovely people stuck in a dive bar in Detroit, try to survive the growing wish apocalypse. Option property, entire universe coming from this thing. Amazon Prime is on it. Back order not stock. You need to be on it. That is 8 billion genies, number two, second print. But 8 billion genies isn't done because they continue to do this. No, excuse me, fourth print. They continue to do this. 8 billion genies, number three, now has a fourth print dropping the same week. Wonder if these covers somehow connect. Again, a Ryan Brown cover. There you have it. Um, you already know, Charles Soul, artist, cover artist, Ryan Brown. We explore the first eight days after Ape and Genius appeared on Earth, offering one wish to every man, woman, and child. The wish-proof Lampwick Tavern has provided a safe haven for our eight heroes so far, but now they must undertake a crucial mission into a world utterly remade by frivolous and bizarre wishes. With a special appearance from history's most famous drunkards, it is back order, not stock. And again, we are going back to the eight billion genies. Well, yes, eight billion genies, number four. Third print. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight billion genies, number four, third print. We're going to put a little space there so we can get this right. And here we have your third print of eight billion genies done by Ryan Brown. 
written by Charles Soule, artist, cover artist, Ryan Brown. Welcome to the first eight weeks as the world continues to change in the wake of genies appearing to everyone on earth and offering them a single wish. Things are getting intense. Plenty of folks have wished for superpowers and we all know what happens when you get a bunch of superhero people, to, superpower people together, they fight. How will our heroes survive the powered age? Back order, not stock. Already know this had the very cool Clark Kent homage cover. Um, none of these books, the first prints, are cover price. I am telling you to get on the phone, call your people. Ape and Genies likes to drop three books at a time with these second subsequent prints. They want to get all the money, and they're getting all of the money. Last but not least, from Image Comics, we have a new entry. Image loves to drop number ones in abundance. Here is your love sick number one. Tons of covers, no incentives, no incentives. This is uh, your cover H done by Jim Ma Food. Very interesting artwork there. That is your Jim My Food cover H. And my favorite cover artist, Mirka Andoffel, has an entry for cover G. That is Mirka Andoffel. And man, did she kill it. She killed it. Back order not stocked on this thing as well. And then you have your Maria Love It cover F. Love it. And of course, Blink Sketch does his, her, or their thing on this cover, followed by your cover D, Luna Vecchio, black and white in color tray dress. Cover C, also by Luna, Lu, excuse me, Luana Vecchio. There is a pig theme going on here. And then you have your cover B, Luana Vecchio. And cover A, seven covers, I believe. I don't know. Um, Luana Vecchio. And this is her book. So it is written and drawn by Luana Vecchio. The Lovesick Club is an exclusive subscribers only site on the dark web that offers the best in erotic and ultraviolent entertainment. There, matriarch Domino and her fellow dominatrixes punish and torture none other than their own loyal subscribers, many of whom pay good money to meet their end by her hand in front of a large anonymous audience. But in the eyes of her rage-filled haters, Domino is the mother demon, a deranged succubus who oppresses men by turn turning them into her slaves. For this crime against men, she must be hunted down and punished. After Valero and Gospel for a New Century, Luana Ve Vecchio invites you to explore the furthest limits of consent, idolatry, hate, and love in this modern blood and neon soaked horror saga. That's not for the faint of heart. Luana Vecchio. You didn't read Valero. Go get Bolero. It was really dope. This looks interesting. Back order, not stock. Preview game on deck. We gonna beep it. Let us hope. Let us hope. It is a PG preview. It is. And that's what you get. A couple pages. They don't want to show us too much. And I'm glad they didn't because this is a PG show. That haven't been said. We are going to move on to the one entry we have from Fair Square. We do like Fair Square. They don't drop books all the time, but when they do, they tend to drop fire. This one is called Beyond Topia. Not a cheap book. Not a cheap book. I'm gonna keep it real with you. Beyond Topia Legends number one coming from Fair Square. There are three covers. It is a $12.99 cover price. It is also back order out of stock. Here is your cover C, Kieran Darbo cover. That is dope. That is a dope cover. Cover C, Kieran Darbo. And then you have a Philip Tan cover B, which is also very dope. And then you have your Stefan Segovia, Brian Valenza cover. Also very dope. Reminds me of an image book that dropped next year, which I'm sure will be mentioned in this synopsis. Um, this is from Fair Square Comics. It is written by Brian Valenza and Henry Barajas. Artist Sammy Basri in various cover artist Steven Zagova and Brian Valenza. When the past is the future. Where unknown myths and legends are discovered. Witness the birth of the mystic universe. Here comes Beyond Topia Legends. From the mind of Indonesian visual artist Brian Valenza, Marvel Image, Beyond Topia Legends is an anthology series bleeding a variety of folklores, heroes, and legends all reimagined for American and international audiences with a unique flavor. Co-spearheaded by award-winning Latinx author Henry Barajas, Helm of Grey Castle, which is what this cover reminds me of, the bi-monthly series brings together the best artists from Indonesia and the world, including Sammy Basri, 
Erie Gassany, and many more, featuring stunning exclusive covers from Steven Zagobia, Philip Tan, and Karen S. Darbel. Beyond Topia Legends embodies the values of Fair Square Comics, bringing comics from the rest of us to every comic book fan in the world. It is presented in our Squarebound Deluxe format, similar to the Classified Hit Collection. Remember Classified? It dropped a couple months ago from Fair Square, Squarebound, graphic novel-esque, really dope. Next, from Source Point Press. No preview game on that. Would love to see the interiors of this because the coloring and the pencils look really good. Source Point Press dropping a few books. This one is called Guardian. Not to be confused with the Guardian from Marvel Comics. This is from Source Point Press. Come on, Brody. Is this what we're doing? Do I have to actually go into Source Point? Nah, we just gonna go to the next page. Here it is. Guardian number one from Source Point Press. It looks really, really, really good. This is your K Beard cover. I am, I really, really am impressed with this cover. Love the colors, love the art on this cover. Really am impressed with this cover. It is written by Easton Deverna, artist, cover artist, K Baird, back order not stopped. High up in the Windy Mountains, there is a tomb, and there are rumors about this tomb. Ale Ward is the ancient guardian of the tomb of Livia. When the northern, middle, and southern kingdoms of the Great Sphere plunge into a three war once again, events are set in motion that will trigger the beginning of the end times, and Ale Ward will soon find that the fate of the realm is a heavy weight to bear indeed. That is Guardian number one. He guards the tomb up in the mountains. There's rumors about the tomb. The three war, I'm imagining this would be a tripartite war, which again, middle, southern, northern kingdoms, all at beef. Ale Ward stuck in a middle. That is Guardian number one from Source Point Press. Gone, Purple Triangle, back order not stocked. Source Point Press has a second number one dropping this same week. That is Argus. Number one dropping from Source Point Press. Of course, we put an extra letter up in there. Argus number one has one cover. Um, well, this one is from Action Lab <laughs> Danger Zone, and it dropped 3 4 2020. And here is your Source Point Press. Argus from Daryl Nick Realm. That is the cover artist, Daryl Nick Realm. Very interesting. Written by Mark Brodolini, artist cover artist, Daryl Nick Realm or Nick Rem. Time travel is real. Scientific prodigy Randall Patton has had a breakthrough that allows travel through the time stream, which immediately led to the creation of the Argus, the temporal law enforcement organization that polices the time space continuum. After an accident renders one of the members of the Argus insane, he begins killing off the others, except they're all versions of Randall Patton from various points in his own life. Who can stop Randall but himself? Back order, not stopped. That is the Argus from Sourcepoint Press. Let's see if it is similar to the original, yes. So maybe if we look at the preview for this joint, I'm not saying, but I'm saying. It's Action Lab apparently dropped this book as well. I would suggest tracking down the app Action Lab book as well. That's just me. That would be my suggestion. That is Argus. Finally, for our indies, and then we're going to move into Marvel, we have one vault book. We like this book. Why? Because we like indie subsequent prints. This is end after end. Number one, it is a subsequent print of end after end, which dropped some months ago from vault. We are getting a recolored version of one of the original covers by Sonato. Sanando C. There you have it. It is written by Tim Daniel, David Andre, artist, cover artist, Sanando C. Life is nothing if not a series of endings. School, jobs, friendship, love. Walter Williams' death was fast and unexpected. His was an unremarkable life. So how is it that his story continues as cannon fodder in an endless war waged against an insatiable darkness, hell-bent on consuming all of existence? This is in after end, number one, second print, back order, not stocked there is that we do very much like indie subsequent prints next for marvel black panther number 11 what a series what a run we are having on black panther 
keys, 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 probably the biggest key of the year so far dropped in Black Panther number three. That one in 25, Stratospheric, as I want to say. Um, number nine, key book. Number 10, key book. Number 11, key book. Two covers. This is your extreme Okazaki Extreme variant by Takashi Okazaki. Very Mark Teixeira-esque with that cover. And then your cover A featuring first cover appearances done by Alex Ross. This is why we like A covers. First cover appearances up on this joint written by John Ridley, artist German Peralta, cover artist Alex Ross. The beginning of a new arc, all this in the world too. When global communications are shut down by an unknown militant force, the Avengers are called to stop them. But armed with power, powerful vibranium weapons and eerie knowledge on how to take down the Avengers one by one, this new squadron has T'Challa, is, T'Challa especially worried. And the reveal of who is leading them threatens to shatter everything T'Challa has come to understand and trust. New, new, new operative word, new group, new characters, new first appearances, all up on this cover. This is the cover you want. Make phone calls, call people, get online with your LCS, whatever it is you got to do, make sure you do not leave Black Panther number 11 on the table. Next, one of my favorite books dropping from this FOC, something new from Marvel, like when Marvel strays away <coughs> from their, their standard fare. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cross Gen Tales number one. Paco Medina, one in 50 virgin cover. That is your one in 50 virgin cover of Cross Gen Tales coming from Marvel. Yes, this is different. I'm excited for it. I like different. Um, and then you have your Paco Medina trade dress of the one in 50. This book has an $8.99 cover price. It is written by Mark Wade and various artists, Butch Geis and various cover artists, Paco Medina. Surprising tales from a universe of fantasy, folklore, and science fiction. The debut issues of four of the signature titles from the 21st century's most innovative imprint and some of the biggest names in comics offer a window into other worlds. In Ruse, number one, Detective Simon Archer and his assistant Emma Bishop face magic and mystery on the Victorian S planet Arcadia. In Mystic, Number one, meet, miss, meet sisters Genevieve and Giselle. One is a sorceress and one is a socialite, but their destinies are about to be transformed in Sigil. Number one, a planetary unit is locked in a centuries war with the star-faring Saurians. And in Sojour, number one, the archer Arwen and her allies fight for survival in the shadow of the undead dictator Mordoth. But who are the Sigil bearers who unite these four stories? Who are the Sigil bearers who unite these four stories? Very interesting. We got a little bit of a... Uh, cross gentiles action going on books that dropped in the very beginning stages of um the early 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 2000 2001 ish is what we're talking about from the this, this these books are picked up by marvel so there you have it cross gentiles i'm on board i want to see where they're going to go with it i like when marvel strays from their standard fare who knows if any of these characters show up in the 616 at a point in time or another your boy the Merc with a Mouth is back with a new book. It's got tons of covers. Of course, it's got tons of covers. Come on, man. Can I just get the most recent Deadpool covers? I got 37 pages. I don't want to go through 37 pages. You don't want me to go through 37 pages. We don't even have time to go through 37 pages. We're just going to click all real quick. And we're going to find out of all of these stupid Deadpool books, you would think the not stupid, but you know what I mean? You would think that the Deadpool book that we want would just be right there at the top. So here we go. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Who knew? Who knew that jumping inside of Diamond would have would do this much to us, right? We got to do all of this. Here we go. We got, we, we got it. We got it. This is the new Deadpool number one. Tons of covers. So we're just going to go in order because why not? Bottom up. Window Shades variant. 
done by Tom Riley. That is Deadpool number one, the window shades variant. Of course, he's going to have a crazy window shades variant. Next, you have your David Nakayama virgin variant. This is a one in 100 copy incentive, followed by your one in 25 copy incentive by Lionel Francis Yu. And then we have a one in 50 copy incentive done by Jim Chung. Keeping that teddy bear close, huh, bruh? And then we have the Mike Hawthorne variant. David Nakayama with another variant, the interview with Deadpool homage cover. Rob Leefield dropping an extreme variant, which we've seen this cover three times already. Come on, Rob. We've seen this exact cover on three different books already. Can we get a new cover, bruh? You just gonna keep throwing the same cover on... Man, what are we doing here, man? And this is your Martin Cocolo cover. Literal enough for you yet? Hmm. So, it is written by Alyssa Wong, artist, cover artist Martin Cocolo. Marvel's top merc is back in business. We all know Wade Wilson's one of the top mercenary assassins in the Marvel Universe, even if he is simultaneously the most annoying one. But he's pushing to make that recognition official as he auditions for the elite group known as the Atelier. Now, he has 48 hours to kill one of the world's most famous supervillains. Only problem, he's been kidnapped and something strange is growing inside him. Things are going to get gross as writer Alyssa Wong and artist Martin Cocolo take out their pinup aggression on everyone's pizza-faced, jabber-mouthed, misguided, hate-to-love, love-to-hate fade. Deadpool. Parental advisory. There is that. Um, so that is Deadpool number one. Tons of covers on that thing. Rob Liefeld deciding to phone it in. Like he called a phone to call a phone to call a phone. It was like, put me on speaker for that cover. That's, that's what he did. No preview game on that book. So we're going to scroll all the way up. And our next book is a new Guardians of the Galaxy book. Wonder if this is done by L. Ewing because Guardians of the Galaxy has been away for a while and it was really dope when L. Ewing was writing it. Really, really dope when L. Ewing was writing it. Tied it in with Sword and X-Men was really cool. This is Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Number one, one cover. Not an L. Ewing book, a Paco Medina cover though. So there's that. You have Kevin Shinnick as the writer, Geraldo Sandoval as the artist, cover artist, Paco Medina. The world mind is collecting data for the new Xander Pavilion on Terra and who knows Earth better than Peter Quill? Probably a lot of people doesn't know. Is that a celestial? Excuse me. Is that, excuse me, probably a lot of people doesn't know. Is that a celestial has been watching and waiting for the Guardians of the Galaxy to be distracted to begin his plan to wipe humanity from existence? So wait, what? A celestial is waiting for something as paltry as a group of superheroes known as the Guardians of the Galaxy to be distracted so it can do what it does? We are talking celestials. I don't know. Gonna have to read this book to see if everything adds up. As of now, I'm scratching my head. I'm scratching my head. Okay, then. Hulk number 10. Yes, we like Hulk number nine. Man, we like Hulk number nine in that first appearance of Monolith. So, of course, of course, we have to pick up number 10 to find out what other first appearances we are going to be getting. We got a first cover appearance of number nine of Monolith, who is the monarch of a world uh, built for Hawks by Hawks. Here is your amazing Spider-Man variant cover by Benjamin Sue. Remember that old armor from back in the day? Well, Benjamin Sue is bringing it back in an homage to that original hollow foil green cover from back in the day. Hulk number 10. This is your Ryan Otley variant. We like first cover appearances and we get tons of appearances on this cover. Tons. One, two, three, four. We get in the first cover appearances. We like first cover appearances. That is what it is. Written by Donnie Cates. Artist, cover artist, Ryan Otley. Hulk Planet Part 2. Starship Hawk is found what should be the ultimate paradise. Paradise, an entire planet of hawk-like creatures thriving under the heat of a gamma star. But Bruce can't shake thoughts of the past or the nagging suspicion that Monolith isn't being totally honest about what she wants from the hawk. And then there's the matter of the planet's welcoming committee. Welcome to the party, Mr. Banner. There you have it. Key book, key book. Make sure you get hawk number 10. Subsequent prints abound. 
We keep talking subsequent prints because there are a ton on this FOC. Marvel, not to be left out, also has a book that has gone back to print. This is Midnight Suns, number one. We know we got first appearances in that book, first new team appearance. We know that the Midnight Suns are being set up for something or another. They are giving us a game variant. It is a game cover taken out of the Midnight Suns game. These are the game costume designs. Um, so, yeah, this book was written by Sachs, Ethan, Ethan Sachs, um, artist Luigi Zagaria, and the cover art is a game cover. Rise of the Midnight Suns, dark prophecy and apop apocalyptic new villains with horrifying powers of ice which Earth has never faced before ordains a team of Midnight Suns to rise and tear expletive up. Magic Wolverine, Blade, Spirit Rider, and Nico Minoru. But what does this new threat have to do with the Sorcerer Supreme's past and why is Strange Academy student Zoe Laveau number one on the Suns list? You should really have read this first issue. You know Strange Academy is all up in this book. All kind of craziness. Dr. Doom pops up. No games in this particular book. So again, subsequent prints to fortify your investments. Next, we have a very big book. It should be on your pull list. If it is not, make your phone calls now. Call your people. Two really big books for Marvel. This one is really big. Secret Invasion, number one. I mean, we have some dynamic forces options on this thing. Several dynamic forces options on this thing. Really? Is this what we're doing? Y'all just going to make me go to all these different pages when you could just put the most recent diamond. The most recent entry right there on Front Street. Instead, y'all want to do all the other things. So, here are your secret invasion covers. We're going to start off with your Todd Knock. Of course, you have to have a Todd Knock headshot featuring Nick Fury. And then we have your Scotty Young racial variant featuring Nick Fury and an iteration of yoda-esque iron man that is really cool like a baby oh well obviously it's a scrawl but you know looks like yoda um and then you have your one in 25 copy incentive done by giuseppe Comancoli. really cool version of the avengers as scrawls and your 100 copy incentive done by gabriel del otto that is the sickness appears to be super scrawl with Iron Man's helmet. And then you have your Delato trade dress version of the one in 100 copy incentive. And then you have your cover A, which is done by Matteo Lali. Really cool cover A. It is written by Ryan North, artist Francesco Mobili, cover artist Matteo Lali. The scrawls are back in a giant size issue kicking off an all-new five-part miniseries. When Maria Hill detects the merest hint of Skrulls, she asks quickly to put her defensive plans into action, and when Nick Fury is sent to investigate a Skrull sighting in Iowa, he finds the last thing he was expecting. Our pale blue dot is in their sights, and this time Earth's old defenses won't work. Find out who you really trust. The invasion begins now. Secret invasion number one, just in time for a bunch of secret invasion media exposure through disney plus and the mcu so there you have it make sure you get secret invasion number one added to your pull list next we have she hawk number seven why are we doing she hawk why are we covering a she hawk book because we like keys we like potential keys this is the reason why we say if you are only using key collector for spec it is not spec it is disrespect so then you have to do all the other things. You have to read, you have to synopsis, you have to do some research. We know that a major character, a major She-Hawk villain will appear in She-Hawk number eight. We already know this. This has been confirmed. Possibly the cameo in She-Hawk number seven. You don't want to leave cameo companion pieces on the table. This is a no-brainer for us. We're not going to leave the issue before it has been confirmed that a major character will appear on the table, and you should not either. This is your Jen Bartel Miracle Man cover B. And then you have your cover A, also done by Jen Bartel. So then... Writer Rainbow Roll, artist Luca Maresca, cover artist Jen Bartel. After the earthquake, that was She-Hawk number six. She-Hawk knows she has some work to do and a humdinger of a mystery to solve. You will not be able to predict what she finds. What is she going to find? We know. 
that a character will be introduced in number eight that is being described as her greatest nemesis. Yes. So that is why we suggest getting She-Hulk number seven, add it to your pull list. If it is nothing, it is nothing, and it costs you cover price. If it is something, be glad that you have it. Mandalorian at number five. Boy, do we like these Mandalorian books. Boy, do we like Star Wars books. We really like Star Wars books. Tons of keys, tons of first appearances, especially in High Republic. We're going to start off with your 50 copy incentive done by E.M. Gist. That is your 50 copy. You get the gist. 50 copy incentive, Mandalorian, number five. Next, we have your one in 25 Rachel Stott incentive variant. Ooh, we. Do we like Finnick Shand? Do we like Finnick Shand? We like Finnick Shand. There she is. That is a cover appearance. She will probably be making her first appearance in this book. That is what it is. Um, it's a big deal. One of the most popular characters to come out of the Mandalorian television series is Finnick Shand. You are getting her first appearance. Here is your concept art variant. The Gunslinger. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. And here is your cover A, done by Stephanie Hans. Written by Rodney Barnes, artist Jorge Yante, cover artist Stephanie Hans. The Gunslinger. On a familiar desert planet, the Mandalorian helps a rookie bounty hunter who is in over his head. We are going to get Phoenix Shand. Call the people. Make the phone calls. We just got Kara Dune in issue number four. We are going to get Fennec Shand in issue number five. You already know what time it is. First appearance of Fennec Shand. Probably the most popular character to come out of the Mandalorian television series, not named Mando and Baby Yoda. I'm going to throw Ahsoka Tano up there, but Ahsoka Tano is not a new character. Fennec Shand, on the other hand, is a new character. And next, we have a book that we think is going to be the biggest drop this week, it is the header for this particular show. Tiger Division, Tiger Division, Tiger Division, Tiger Division. We are all in on Tiger Division. You should be all in on Tiger Division. Here is your one in 10. Well, there's a bunch. I'm just going to start at the bottom. This is your Ron Lim trading card variant featuring, I believe that is Taiguki. And it is Taiguki, class superhuman. You get all the things. It is a trading card variant. Taiguki, listen, Taskmaster number three, that one in 25. Again, I'm going to use the term stratospheric, gone. New Ages of Atlas, you name anything associated, Black Cat Annual, anything associated with the Tiger Division, Tiger Division's first appearance is Black Cat Annual. Go get it. Walmart variants, all kind of variants. Went back to print. Get the subsequent print, Black Cat Annual. You can get... um. Black Widow, number three, first print, second print, any print, one in 25 of both prints. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. There is a market for these characters. There is a big market for these characters. We're going to talk about it. Next, we have your one in 10 copy incentive done by Kreese with three E's, Lee, featuring Taiguki. They're not playing. That is your one in 10 copy incentive featuring Taiguki, and they are not playing for that first cover appearance of Taiguki you want. Black Widow, number three, second print. Very affordable book. Next, you have your Carlos E. Gomez cover. Tiger Division. Characters we haven't seen before on some of these covers. Just throwing that out there at you. Next, we have your, I'm sorry, Sung Han Yoon variant. Man, you want Crescent and EO number one. You want Arrow number one. You want all of these books. Find them. They are affordable. They are affordable books before they become out of range. Here is your Peach Momoko cover. They will soon be out of range. Here is your 50 copy incentive cover by Yungun Yoon. That is your 50 copy incentive cover featuring Ye Old White Fox. Here is your Art Germ variant cover. It is a one in 100 copy incentive. Appears to be an homage to New Agents of Atlas number one. Really dope cover. Here is your regular Art Germ trade dress cover. And finally, our cover A done by Crease with three E's, Lee, five E's up in there. There it is. Characters we haven't seen before for sure. 
I mean, many of them we have, but some we have not. That having been said, this is written by Emily Kim with artist, cover artist, Kreese Lee. Fierce Fighters, the defenders of South Korea take center stage in their first ever solo series. You'll learn more about Taiguki, a powerhouse with a heart of gold. Lady Bright, a card-wielding sorceress. Mr. Enigma, a street-brawling demigod. The General, a living totem. And Gunner 2, an android with an attitude. They're joined by band favorites White Fox and Luna Snow to form an unstoppable team. Created by our own unstoppable team, writer Emily Kim of Silk and artist Kreese Lee from Marvel Voices. This is one epic series you will not want to miss. You do not want to miss Tiger Division. We already covered it. Get up. Listen, 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 listen. Shout out to the people that are in the room. I am going to remove that. We're going to kick it. Shout out to Jerry Whitman, J Pop, Anthony Trobes, Jason Robinson, Pete Maresca, and Comic Sense up in the house. Listen, Tiger Division. Recap really quick. Got a little bit of time. We're going to recap really quick and we're going to talk about it. We like, we like, we like, we like Briar number one, second print. Period. Point and blank. You should like Briar number one, second print. If you invest, get Briar number one, second print. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, number 100, second print. Another cool book. The Ones from Dark Horse Comics, number one. These are standouts. I'm not going over all of them. I'm just going to things that stand out to me. The Ones, number one from Dark Horse. Brian Michael Bendis. All of the Ones from ever, ever, anywhere, ever for any movie. Uh, the Ones. Go against The One. You want it. IDW, The Armageddon Game, The Alliance, number one. All of these Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Armageddon Game books, get them. All of the 8 Billion Genie subsequent prints. 8 Billion Genie's number two, fourth print, three, fourth print, four, third print. You want them, period. Um, we like the Fair Square Beyond Topia Legends, number one. Um, Guardian, number one from Soy's Point Press, looks really good. And getting into Marvel, Black Panther, number 11. First cover appearances. You want your first cover appearances and your first full appearances. Key book, make sure you have it. I personally like Cross Gentiles, number one. Um, Hulk, number 10, cover appearances. Possible first appearances within the book. Certainly first appearances within the book. If you are specking Secret Invasion, number one, it should be high on your list. She-Hawk, number seven, possible cameo appearance. Mandalorian, number five, we're getting Finnick Shan. Finnick Shan dropping Mandalorian, number five. Make sure you have it. And Tiger Division, number one. Oh, boy. Listen, go get New Agents of Atlas. Any of the affordable copies you can get, get it before it reaches the stratosphere. Um... Black Panther, Black Widow, number three. You can get A covers, B covers, second prints, affordable. Those one in 25s and those ratio variants, not so much. However, the one in 25 of the second print, in my opinion, is a sleeper book. People love the one in 25 of the first print. It is a very expensive book, but the one in 25 of the second book features Taiguki. Taiguki's first cover appearance is the second print. That is the book to have to me. That is the one that will transcend the, uh, the one in 25 of number three. It will surpass it in value, in my opinion. Because it features Taiguki on the cover. It is the first cover appearance. There is also one in 25. You want that book. There's even an exclusive for those who are into exclusives. You want that book. Listen, Black Cat Annual. Go get them. They're affordable. They're like 10 bucks. Get you some Black Cat Annuals. First full appearance of the Tiger Division as a team. Get some Black Cat Annuals. Go get the Walmart exclusive. Get the Black Cat Annuals. Um, What else? Crescent and EO number one. Like a $5 book. Arrow, number one, White Fox, get Luna. These books, these first solos for these characters, grab them now. There is a market for the the, the characters appearing in the Tiger Division. New Agents of Atlas, if you can afford a, a third print, a second print, a first print, grab them. Grab it, number two, very big key book, New Agents of Atlas. Swordmaster, all of the books associated with the Tiger Division. I just listed them. They are available. Some of them, most of them, reasonable and very affordable. I think the big one is going to be that Black Widow number three, second print featuring the first cover appearance of Taiguki and a subsequent print of his first appearance. That is going to be a big book, bigger than what the market has been demonstrating. Recession, buyer's market right now. Buy, buy, buy. If you are in the position, buy spec when we talk about spec our favorite spec is affordable spec spec that costs you minimal dollars and potentially gives you maximum investment value that is what we're all about here at comic sense this is the reason why i'm taking these extra couple of minutes here on focus final order cut off uncanny spec to talk about some of the affordable spec associated with tiger division listen 
if you are in America and you watch this show and you collect and you invest, I am going to tell you that money is money. You may not like the book. I like the book. I like the properties, period. I like the New Ages of Atlas. I own the run. Like them. You may not. But if you are investing, I am telling you that there is a market outside of America for these characters. Use your eBay fingers. Check out eBay. Check out sales. You, it doesn't really tell you where some of these books are going, but I could tell you why the market is high on these. And it may not be an American market. It may be an Asian market. And that is fine. Money is money. I'm down. I love it. I like and enjoy the books. I'm telling you that if people are buying the books, it doesn't matter where they're buying the books from. If they're paying for the books and they're putting money into that pool, that investment pool, that collector's pool, it doesn't matter where the money comes from. If you are investing, you should have an eyebrow raised rock style. I just gave you what you should be looking for. Hope you took notes. Hope you go back, watch this video, like and follow Comic Sense on Facebook and join our Comic Sense Facebook group. Check us out on YouTube. Find us on Instagram. Follow us on the Twitter. Listen, go to YouTube, like, subscribe to the page, click a notification bell so we can continue to, we're going to continue. I don't care if anybody watches. We're going to continue to bring you this content every week. So, I mean, you can do something. You can do nothing. You should do something. That having been said, this has been Final order cut off on Kenny Speck. I'm Issue X. Comic Sense production. Also a Shut Up Ish production. And I'm going to go ahead and shut up. <laughs>